Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Please subscribe to stay up to date with the channel, which is usually updated daily. In this film, with the focus in the US upon the new Cavalon 915, we'll look at the new Rotax 915 motor. Although here, I show a Magni M24 because of the prop option, which I guess you could investigate with the freedoms of US home built. In gyrocopter terms, I think it's fair to say that engines have followed a pretty clear path of early two-stroke McCulloch's to VW air-cooled four-strokes, back to two-strokes with Rotax, and then back again to four-stroke Rotax power with the 9 series, which was launched in 1989. Of course, there have been other engines from Continental Aero Engines, Subaru Automotive, and Yamaha Power, but in the main, the really popular engines that gain traction, especially in terms of reliability, or as I describe. The 9 series launched with the 80 horsepower 912, followed by the 100 horsepower 912S, and then the 115 horsepower 914 with turbocharger, and then finally a 912 IS, still with 100 horsepower, but with fuel injection and an ECU, doing away with the usual twin carburettors. Now we have the 915 IS, which is rated at 141 horsepower for takeoff. 135 horsepower max continuous, also fuel injected with ECU and turbocharger. This isn't going to be a technical appraisal, which by now has already been done to death in magazines and others' YouTube films, but I wanted to give you some impressions having flown this engine quite a lot in gyrocopters. The first number to clarify, perhaps for people not familiar with Rotax engines, is the power figures. The 141 horsepower headline is only available for up to 5 minutes and effectively becomes the takeoff power, while max continuous, available all the time, is 135 horsepower. For those of you that struggle with the weight limit in gyroplanes, you also need to know that the engine is heavier, about 15 kilos more than a 912-914, and that equals about an hour's worth of fuel. It may matter, it may not. To cut to the chase performance wise, the 915's most compelling difference is takeoff performance, and especially in hot and high conditions. This takeoff is at a density altitude of 8,100 feet. Sorry, but I couldn't get to those numbers in the UK to show you a gyroplane takeoff. Of course, it is takeoff and climb performance that make the biggest impression, because flight in the cruise obtains similar actual speeds, but just with less engine thrash. Compared to 912-914, delivery of power is more linear. I always feel, especially with the 912, it's the last thousand revs that everything happens. And the ease of operation is terrific. Engine start is just a turn of a key, much more automotive-like than the choke, crank to prime, mags on, and then engine start with the carbureted versions. And of course, it runs on automotive grade petrol or MOGAS with as little alcohol as possible and the usual cautions around that apply. Fuel consumption is slightly more, I reckon around 18 to 20 litres an hour with an 80 miles an hour cruise and up to 35 litres an hour in the climb. Of course with the extra weight of the motor plus those fuel requirements it may limit some if they like to fly legally. Time before overhaul with 915 is 1200 hours versus 2000 hours for 912-914 which in truth is unlikely to be a concern for the new owner on the basis of the usual hours flown per year. But perhaps the bigger question for some might be reliability. So far I've flown around 100 hours in 915 gyros with no snags, although that is with a factory installed unit, and I suspect any early horror stories may have their issues in the install due to the relative complex nature of 915. 